video is not intended for children. Viewer discretion is advised. If you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you. Thank you. Say it again. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Wookie oh, Exile. Wookie started out the day, brother. Thank you so very much. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Mornings of Mischief. And we are talking about the one and the only James Earl Jones this morning. Oh man, I love it. I move fast. Um, I, you know what? I remember. I remember. Um, I I was getting older. I was almost getting to the point where I was like, nah, f f the Disney movies, f the Disney movies. Because you know, I'm a young teenager. And, you know, I can't be seen. But and then my friend Chris came over and was like, you got to see Lion King. I'm like, what are you talking about, dude? And he's like, man, I cried. I was like, what do you mean you cried? You can't cry. You're you're a young teenager. You can't cry at a Disney cartoon. He's like, you will too. And I'm like, shit, I am crying. You bought some guy. <laughs> One day you take you're your crying. Place. Yeah, you're crying. He was cutting One onions. Day. <laughs> One day you will take your place, my son. You know, and you're like, oh no. Right in the fields. No. I know. Oh, it never fails. Little Simba, like, nudging him. Come on, Dad. Come on. And I'm like, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the circle of life. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, and man. copyright strike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some of the best lines. I, 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 you just, you just can't join me and we will rule the galaxy as father and son. Oh, before we went live, I, I was like, I would have so done it too, just because of that damn voice. I mean, yes, father. Made you think about it. Like, okay, let me seriously. This for me. <laughs> Ruler of the empire. Not a bad gig. No, no. I mean, I can see it. I can see like Luke walking with him, you know, holding his arm because he got it cut off, following him, you know, prepare, tell my Star Destroyer to prepare for our arrival. You know, Luke in tow, just looking all haggard because he just got his ass kicked. <laughs> oh, man. It would have been epic. What were you thinking, George Lucas? It would have been epic. <laughs> <laughs> So many, so many crazy. I mean, he was in everything, guys. He was in everything. He started out. We were looking at this earlier. He started out on like on, on guiding light and as the world turns. 1952, 1956. Doctor Jim Fraser and Doctor Jerry Turner in as the world turns. 
That that's crazy. Wow, that is that is nuts. That's like golden age of television. He played a doctor on things. both of them. He played a doctor. Yeah. Doctor Strange Love. He's yep. in Doctor Strange Love. Mm -hmm. That's one of my favorite movies. Yes, I think that was his first um, film role, if I remember correctly. Yep. A yeah, lot before of before that he was mostly like you said in the in the TVs and and on stage he did a lot of stage work too mm -hmm. and and just a lot of TVs and he, he was in NYPD he was in Tarzan it was like the the UFO he, he was in the UFO incident Vegetable Soup Jesus of Nazareth I can see that he was Balthazar mm -hmm. uh huh uh huh he was Balthazar. And Jesus of Nazareth before he ever played Vader. Yep. And he was uncredited. He was uncredited as the voice mm -hmm. of Vader. Mm -hmm. And yes. the last remake of Bo Jest. The Sheik. The Sheik. Well, it's kind of crazy to think because his voice is so iconic. But when he was a teenager, he was a selective mute because he had yep. such a bad stutter. Yeah. He, he yeah. wouldn't speak for eight years. I think it's his teachers um, <laughs> encouraging him to read poetry. It actually got him um, talking again, and then he discovered acting and fell in love with that. Do no, so you know how? Um, encouraged him. Yeah. Do you know how that how that happened? And this yeah, is interesting. Hi. Yeah, he'd moved from Mississippi to, um, I believe it was, was it, was it Michigan? Michigan. And then he yeah. moved to, and um, because his father, his father was an actor and had left the family when he was really young. So he left Mississippi to go live with his grandparents. And that type of move was just so traumatic for him. Um that he had this like really bad stutter and I forget which interview was that I saw with him, but he was saying that he couldn't talk to people, but he would talk to animals on his grandparents' farm, like without, like without a stutter at all. Cause he just felt that he was closer, that he felt that he could relate more to the animals on the farm than like to people. And yeah, and, po and purple, like you were saying, it's like an English teacher, took interest in him because he wrote like all this amazing poetry. So it's just, sometimes it's just, um, it's amazing to re to find out like an actor as profound and who has so much gravitas as uh, James Earl Jones actually had a stutter. Well, when uh, you, feel, when you mm -hmm. think about his or or oration and the fact that he was an effective mute, you know, that's almost inconceivable. Mm -hmm. As far as I'm aware, he still does have a little bit of a stutter. Um, I think I've seen interviews with him where he says he has to be very um, conscious when he speaks. Mm. And that's why he's got such a um, powerful delivery. Pat asked, great cameo at the end of Sneakers. Yes, we were just talking about that. I do not. I, I haven't seen that movie in so long. He's at the very end. Out. He's at. He's the like head of the CIA or something at the very end. He's the one they mm -hmm. deal with. And he's like, fine, I'll get you a, I'll get you a, a Humvee. Just, just give me the box. Because <sighs> mm. I know for me, um, I didn't know. I think I'd heard that his voice was that he was a voice of Darth Vader, but as a person, he didn't seem to um, formulate as a person to me until I saw Roots: The Next Generations, mm -hmm. and he played like Alex Haley as much older. Of like, wow, wow that's the guy. <laughs> I didn't know if it, it, it was until I was a teenager. I didn't know he wasn't in the suit. As Vader, I yeah. didn't know he wasn't. In, I thought, oh, well, they throw this guy. I remember, I remember one of my friends being like, "It's amazing how you know James Earl Jones looks like an old white guy when they take the mask off." <laughs> and I'm like, I, yeah, yeah, "It sucks that they, you know, that they that they did that. I wish they wouldn't have just taken yeah. the mask off." And my friend's like, "Well, he's not even in the suit in the movie. He just does the voiceover." And I'm like, "No, yeah, no, yeah." It's this mm -hmm. big English guy mm -hmm. named David Prowse in the suit. And I'm like, no shit. I didn't even know that. Well, James Earl Jones is a big guy, but he's not that big. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
he was in um, CBS Library, apparently. He was the narrator on Beauty and the Beast. Hmm. I just about want to, you know, say that he has been on just about everything. I mean, from you name anything in pop culture from uh, whatever it is, Stargate up to whatever, he's been in it. Oh, well, y'all know he was in Conan. Consecrate yes. him on the tree yes. of woe. <laughs> Crucify him. I can love that. that must God, have been in my youth. must have been in my youth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that scene, I remember that scene, watching that scene with, um, at the beginning where he like snake charms Conan's mom. And it's just like, yeah, I remember my dad hated that. He was like, why are you just standing there? I'm like, he snake charmed her dad don't you get it he's like he snake charmed her but he it's like a reverse snake charm because he's the snake and he's doing it to her he's like well i gotta stop making sense i'm like yeah he's badass <laughs> it's great character i love love thoughts of doom and yeah. throughout the film you can see the big effect he has over people because um that thing that you were talking about just when he's talking about the riddle of steel and yeah. he just gets that woman to jump <laughs> Jump, come here, my darling. Come here. Just boom. Ah, yes. Flesh is strong, boy. Ah, yeah. Gets me all pumped up just talking about it. We got to have a Conan night. One night. Man, I need to watch that movie. <laughs> I I, several years. Me neither. And it was, oh, it was, it's, it's such a guilty pleasure. I have to go back <laughs> and okay. watch it again. It's one of those where you don't quite admit that. You know that that you that you watched it, <laughs> but it just it just was. It was a guilty pleasure. I didn't really read the Conan comics. I knew of them, and I had friends that that loved it. But I was just like, yeah, I don't feel like sitting down and watching that. But a movie, yeah, I'll sit there and watch that. <laughs> yep. and he has got what he's got five lines in that entire movie it's like he doesn't even have that many lines but he's got such a presence he doesn't talk at the beginning with the mom he 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 doesn't talk the first time the first time you see him he he only, he talks to conan twice and that's it in the whole movie he talks to conan twice but he is such a presence it's it's just amazing to me he has such a such a presence in those movies he does like the one um i say like my he's in a lot of films but my guilty pleasure one besides the lion king has to be coming to america yes <laughs> His character and coming, you you know how strong of a character he is, but just how he fits in and just how his range, how he'll go from being, you know, King Joffy Joffer to <laughs> Yeah, I'm just dad right now. You know? Yes. <laughs> when he's in the McDowell's house and they're, you know, hey, hey King, and he's like, mm, somebody get me out of this guy's house. <laughs> Yeah, my all-time favorite with him though is still Field of Dreams. I love that movie. Oh, that one, I I forgot about that movie. I forgot about that. He wasn't that. He was the writer that they all looked up to when they were in college doing the the protests. They were protesting, and he hated that. He was like, people took my book and read it the wrong way and went out and did protests and he's he's telling kevin costner like leave me alone leave me alone go i don't care that you read my book leave me alone <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, one of so the most funny. iconic go ahead go ahead that's what carry on type of I, I was just gonna say when whenever they were at the ball game you know what and that voice they looked at each one well, did you hear that <laughs> <laughs> No, I didn't hear anything. Let's go now. <laughs> Boy, he was he was denying it, man. He didn't want nothing to do with it for a long time there. Pat S says he was the only good thing in coming to America too. I could only watch like Oh man. I, 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 I agree. He he was. I think I told somebody I said if you're if you're gonna watch Coming to America too, um, when the party is over, turn the movie off. Yeah, twenty minutes into it, it's about all you can take. Twenty yeah. thirty minutes because that whole scene, you, you watch it 
because yeah, I'm probably gonna throw a spoiler out here. You watch it because you know, effectively, he says, you know, why wait till I'm dead to have my funeral? Let's have the grandest funeral ever, and it is. <laughs> it is a spectacle. <laughs> it's like pre-funeral. It's perfect all the way down to uh, having Morgan Freeman narrate what's going on. And you see the homage to um, the Lion King when they're holding the baby up. (laughs) 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 But yeah, when he's gone, forget it. The movie is like worthless. If you build it, he will come. (laughs) Larry Larry, in The Great White Hope, he played Jack Jefferson as the boxing heavyweight champion of the early 1910s America. Really? Yeah. Really? I never I never noticed that, Larry Larry. Are you serious? I, I used to love that movie. The one with um, Damon Wayans? Really? Is he even... Yep, Jeff, uh, uh, Jack Jefferson. I must have completely missed that. That's crazy. Yep, that's an old one. Heck, I, I was a kid then. <laughs> 19, what, 70? Early wow. 70s? Late 60s? Shoot, I don't know. Yep, 1970. Judge Dredd, he narrated. He was yep. the uncredited again, man. Yeah, really? I did a lot of uncredited stuff. Of course, if you hear that voice, he's credited. I mean, everybody knows yeah. that voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was an angel in Touched by an Angel. Holy shit. And my mom that used to watch I that. remember. Yeah. I remember that. No. Yep. My wife, she loved that show. <laughs> She was devastated when they took it off. <laughs> yeah, James Earl Jones was just one of those actors. It's like you felt this like comfort when you'd see him on screen or or hear his voice. He was yeah. the first voice of Maggie Simpson in 1994 in Treehouse of Horror 5. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was the first voice of Maggie Simpson in Treehouse of Horror 5. Oh my gosh. You know what? I I kind of believe that because when Simpsons was in its heyday, it was like you hadn't truly made it as an actor unless you got a bit part on The Simpsons, no matter what it was. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pretty sure he was on Sesame Street as well. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, he was. And he was bald then too. <laughs> but he yeah. used to count from one to ten. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> Back in the late 90s, um, they were doing FMB video and video games. And I remember when he took the part of General James Solomon in Command and Conquer Tiberium's son. I was like, holy shit, James Earl Jones is in Command and Conquer. I have to have it. Apparently he did, and uncredited again, he did the no in Revenge of the Sith. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he came back in uh, Rogue One. Mm-hmm. I love that line when he says to Krennic, um, let's see, be careful not to choke on your ambitions. Yeah, as he's choking him. <laughs> as he's choking him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He was also in the series Gabriel's Fire. I forgot about that. You can't have you can't have Darth Vader and not have James Earl Jones as the voice of Darth Vader. No. It's just not the same. It doesn't it doesn't work. Hmm. He was also in Lois and Clark, The Adventures of Superman. <laughs> really? I'm surprised I don't remember that one because yeah. I've watched yeah. that series regularly was he a villain i didn't remember it either he wasn't franklin um, stern who was he the house of luther he was only in one episode the house of luther 
Mm, don't remember that one. Oh, okay. Picket Fences. He was in Picket Fences. Holy shit. <laughs> like I said, wow. you can just about name anything. He's been in it. <laughs> naked, naked Gun. Naked <laughs> Gun. Naked Gun, 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 I remember. Yeah, I remember that one. That and was one he, of the weakest oh, ones, but he was good in it. <laughs> he was in Frasier. Yes, I remember yeah. that. Yeah, I, remember I remember that. I can't believe I remember that because I, I love Frasier. I did not watch Cheers, but I watched Frasier. I'm, the, I'm right there with you. I could never get into Cheers, but man, mm -hmm. I loved Frasier. And of course, uh, you know him from Frasier because everyone's or from Cheers because everyone has seen at least seen a couple episodes of Cheers. I don't think anybody yeah. on the planet hasn't seen a couple episodes of Cheers. But yeah, I really, I really loved Frazier. Third Rock from the Sun narrator, mm -hmm. uncredited. Wait, he was? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he, yeah, he was the narrator in Third Rock. I remember that because I always thought they'd bring him in as like their leader, and it wasn't. It was um, William Shatner, and they brought in as the leader. <laughs> And all he wanted to do is get with an earth girl the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's Shatner. Da, 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 da. <laughs> he even made um, an episode of The Big Bang Theory watchable by oh, being yeah. in it. Oh, yeah. And the way he played it, just, you know, how um, Sheldon just seemed, you know, course how Sheldon is <laughs> and just James Earl Jones just being so over the top with it 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 oh god it was great it was great. Sit down. <laughs> <laughs> I think Carrie Fisher was in that episode as well if I remember correctly was she because <laughs> um they they ring her doorbell and then run <laughs> oh wait was that the episode where Sheldon talked about all the restraining orders that he had I think so. <laughs> I think he had one from Leonard Nimoy and one, there's one from Patrick Stewart. <laughs> oh, you <shit. laughs> Ooh, Nass, I don't remember who he was. In SG1. He, he, okay, there's an episode called Thor's Hammer. Yeah. Where, oh, um, he's, yeah. He's yeah. big guy, the, you know, the, the original one of the, the monster. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he's the big monster in the cave and that Teal cast to fight, and he does the voice for him. Oh. Yeah, they, they kept shooting him, and he just kept getting up. <laughs> <laughs> he was kind of like a Terminator. Uh, you know what? One of the, one of the, one of the best little, um, one of the best little gems that I remember is him being the guy that owned the dog in the Sandlot. Yep. The big dog that they're all afraid of. He's yep. the guy that had all the baseballs. And, and he gave them the, up baseballs. Yeah. And they had that Babe Ruth. The kid had the Babe Ruth baseball that the dog got. And then he gave him a baseball signed by the whole team. Yep. I remember that. <laughs> That was one of my <clears throat> kids' favorite movies back when they were small. You're killing me, Smalls. <laughs> Mr. Myrtle in the Sandlot. Yeah, I, I, I know I've seen that film, but it's been a long time. But I remember the dog. <laughs> yeah, Mark, he played Admiral Greer. We were, we were talking mm -hmm. about that before we went live because I, I remember – getting upset in clear and present danger oh that away. that that was heartbreaking yeah and he was in he was in hunt for red october too he's one of the only actors that was in all three movies i think he is the only actor that was in all three movies because jack ryan wasn't originally played by harrison ford no. he was played by alec baldwin, alec. Yeah, um, baldwin. And he, I, I really enjoyed that that first one with Alex in it. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm a big Harrison Ford fan, but yes. I think Alex Baldwin did a better, you know, job as, you know, on the series. Has he done any crazy Ivans? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> 
His next one will be to port. Why? Because his last one to starboard? No, because he always goes to port in the bottom half of the hour. <laughs> Crazy bastard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Was he in mad about you? Didi? I don't remember if he was. I, 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 man, I only watched that, that show once. I know I've watched Frasier and over and over and over again and other ones, but I don't remember him and Matt about you. I never watched that. No, show. I never watched that one too much. Mm -mm. I, wasn't that the one with Helen Hunter in it or what? Yeah, I wasn't interested. Uh uh. Meteor Man. He was in Meteor Man. Really? Yeah, Ernest Moses in Meteor Man. Man, that didn't that take you back. But no, hey, you know what? The only black superhero movie we ever got was um, T'Challa and uh, Black <laughs> Panther. <laughs> Heck with Pluto Nash, right? And Blade. And Blade. And Blade. Oh, and Blade. And Spoon. On, I, I some yeah, erase that up. from my memory. Some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate uphill. You <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Oh my god, there's a there's a scene in Blade 2 where Whistler's like, boy, never underestimate the power of the poontang. One hair off that can pull a dump truck up a five mile grade. <laughs> and you're like, what in the hell, dude? <laughs> oh. Of course he didn't say poontang, he said something else, but wow, I'll just say that. <laughs> I'm not going to say that. There are some things even Loki won't say on the morning <laughs> show. <laughs> we might get to that in Seven Kinds of Mischief, but we're not going to do that on the morning show. Ah, too early. Oh, having him back. He, he was in Rebels. He played Vader in Rebels. Having him back in Rogue One was just absolutely awesome. And unfortunately, he played the voice of Darth Vader in The Rise of the Sway Walker. Yeah. I can't watch that. He's in Star Tours. I don't know if any of y'all remember that. Yes. 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 I love Star Tours. <laughs> Apparently, he was in the Bench Warmers as Darth Vader as well. That's, that's, I, I don't remember that. I really don't remember that. Was this? I, I don't recognize that one at all. <laughs> Two and a half men. <laughs> According to Jim, he was in According to Jim, Beast of All Saints. According to Jim, is that the one with Belushi in it? I think so. He was in Miracle on Third Street. He was the voice of Santa. He was in Everwood. <laughs> Good God. Everwood. He played the rock that the the sword was in in Merlin, the TV <laughs> miniseries. <laughs> Just can't think of a better person to narrate your life, can you? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you what, just looking through this body of work, it's amazing how, yeah. how much stuff he's been in. It is amazing. I think what strikes me as well, all the interviews I've ever seen with him, he comes across as just a really lovely guy. You know, he's really warm. He's really kind of open to, to answering anybody's questions. And I don't think... Anyone who's met him as a fan has ever had a bad story to tell about him. He seems yeah. to be like a real gentleman. Yeah. It seems Highway to Heaven. He was in Highway to Heaven. Yep. Alan Quartermain in The Lost City of Gold. That man. I remember no one liked that. No one liked those movies except me. It was like, fake Indiana Jones. Alan Quartermain. <laughs> It's just amazing. He's he he has had something to do with everything. And he mm -hmm. seems like he's such a humble guy too. I mean, yeah. he, you know, he never you know self promotes or anything like that. He just just an average. You know, he's just somebody that you would just like to sit down and talk to. 
I, I would love to. I would love to. I would love to know, you know, what was it like behind the scenes doing the voice for Vader? Yes, because he was the only one who knew the twist, wasn't he? Even Mark Hamill didn't know up until they were ready to film the scene. Yeah, he was, he, um, okay, so in that scene, sp supposedly what um, what Luke is told is Obi-Wan killed your father. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, yeah, he didn't even know, Mark Hamill didn't even know that Luke, that Luke, Vader was Luke's father. It was your Obi Wan killed your father, which in a way is true mm -hmm. from a certain point of view. Yeah, from a certain <laughs> point. <laughs> I, I love that line. <laughs> Dee Dee Myers, James Earl Jones is such a career, and I don't think he would have it any other way. I don't think so either. I really don't. No, and he's, he's 90 and still, still going. Mags, I would have liked to see Montana. He was he was born the same year my father was, of course. That's you know, he grew up in the middle of the depression. I mean, you know, nineteen thirty one. That's that 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 was hard too. That probably shaped his life a lot too. Mm hmm We were talking before um before we went live and a little bit after that, um he he stuttered when he was younger. Mm hmm Yep. Yeah. Something really severe. It's so much so that um I think as we, we said earlier and I think Mark pointed out as well, um he chose to be mute rather than have to kind of force himself to speak to people. Yeah. It it seems like what what it was very traumatic for him when he moved from uh, Mississippi up to Michigan to live with his grandparents. That just, that was back in, in the time when a lot of that was happening all over the country. You know, the great migration, people were just moving all around during the great depression. <laughs> and Mags with a $10 super chat. Thank you so very much, Mags. And she says, James Earl Jones is so iconic. He has a very special place in my heart. I knew him as the voice of Vader, but he captured me with Mufasa as a child. Perfect casting. Maybe it's the daddy's girl in me. He was, no, no, Max. He was perfect. Mm -hmm. Absolutely perfect as Mufasa. It didn't get any better than that. Thank you so very much, Max, for that $10 super chat. Skull! Go! fitting <laughs> to meet you in at the end of a lightsaber i think it was also really cool that um he in the lion king reprised his role with um Madge sinclair who played the um the queen opposite in in uh coming to america yes he, he's got this presence there. It, it, it's like I was talking when I was talking about Conan, he didn't mm -hmm. have to, he didn't have to have that many lines. He didn't, he just had this intimidating presence that, that, that towered over everything. Same with Vader with the voice of Vader. Yeah. You had Peter Mayhew in the suit, but that voice was just, and there, there's a lot of controversy behind that, but that wasn't James Earl Jones's fault at all. Um, that that had to do with Lucas and, and Fox, but James Earl Jones, you know, impressive, most impressive. It it just it didn't get any better than that. And Mags, yes, you can't, you can't even think about Vader without you know thinking of James Earl Jones. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, the his presence, you know, is intimidating on screen, but when you put that voice behind it. I mean, it's just commanding. Yes, yes. And Mag says a kingly voice, but a loving and warm father voice as well. I love my dad very much and looked up to him, so it related to me very much. I think it related to all of us. He was all our dads, especially mm -hmm. in Lion King. It was like, you know, you are my son. You're like, I'm not crying. 
Ja. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and Josh, brother, Josh, bro. No, you're cool. You're cool. If you still want to, if you can, I don't know if you can make it or not for the last, you know, little bit of this, but I'll be more than happy to throw you an invite just in case you can. How did you guys feel about him reprising um, Mufasa in the, well, in quotes, live action Lion King? <laughs> I didn't watch it. No, I didn't either. I, I can't say one, you know, if that would probably be one of the only uh, high points of the, the remake would be his, his voice. Mm-hmm. And yes, Pat S, he turned down Cisco on DS9, and I'm okay with that too. I am absolutely okay with that. Um, I'm, I'm kind of glad he did. I don't think it would have been the same character. Mm-hmm. Well, you have a picture in your head about a character, and you know if he would have came in, that would have been totally different. But it's like anything; if he'd have been the original one, you'd have never thought any different. You'd have said, "Oh, he's the only one that could have played it." And that's very possible. I, I just, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm so attached to that character as he was. I don't think. I don't know. I don't think I could see him as anybody else. Avery mm-hmm. Brooks was just so just Cisco. Yep. And you can go back to that first season and say, well, he wasn't quite Cisco. And some people say, well, he wasn't quite Cisco until he cut the hair off completely. When he went bald, man, that's 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 when it was like, oh, he's he Cisco. went bald. He went badass. Yep. I mean, really, in the first season, I had to admit, I thought he was kind of a pussy. <laughs> and project story time that's totally cool brother totally cool thank you for being here man um i i thought he was just it, it he just wasn't cisco yet it's like he's nope. not cisco yet mm-hmm. um, well yeah, he, he definitely grew into the character go ahead go ahead oh just think he definitely grew into the character yeah. Oh yeah, when 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 he's going after Eddington and he's pretty much like Mr. Wolf, prepare a quantum torpedo and right don't fuck with the Cisco on it. You're like, yeah. <laughs> when when he's hitting that punching bag, that's what I always talk about. It's like, why is Cisco your favorite captain? Because when he's hitting that punching bag and he's talking to Dax and he's like, I let him in my home. He came in my home. I made the man dinner and he's just beating the shit out of his punching bag. I'm like, yes, that is my captain. <laughs> that is the captain I most relate with because I'd be doing the same shit. I let him in my home, old man. Pow, pow, pow. That knee punched that cue. <laughs> yeah. You hit me. Picard never hit me. I'm not Picard. <laughs> yeah, that, that right there was a high point in him when he said, I'm not Picard. <laughs> Riker grew the beard and Cisco shaved the hair. Yep. Absolutely. Riker grew the beard and Cisco shaved his head. And boom, and characters made- were born. Yeah, I think they made Riker shave his beard off when he when he got the part, and he grew it back afterwards or whatever. Pat S, you are talking about the like most tear induced episode of Deep Space Nine. I I am not afraid to admit that I bawled my eyes out because of the relationship with Jake, and I never really cared about that relationship until I saw that episode, and I was like, oh my god, you know, he's trying to save his dad, and he dies, it was just like, damn, damn, spent his whole life trying to get his dad back. I remember when Avery Books was cast for DS9, and I thought it was perfect casting, I love Avery as Hawk and Spencer Fryer, yep. Yep, and they didn't, it was almost like they didn't want him to be him. And finally, when he shaved his head, it was like, now go ahead and be him. <laughs> they, they tried telling him that because he wanted to. He wanted to shave his head. And they were like, no, you can't do that. You got to grow the hair out because we can't have two bald captains. It would confuse people. I'm like, oh, what? Yeah. What? <laughs> what? Like, that would confuse people. Oh, Gun Bunny. You take care of Gun Bunny. We will see you next week. Have a good one, Gum Bunny. Bye, Gum Bunny.
Bunny had a gun. <laughs> so would um, James L. Jones be on your guys' top list of people to meet? I know we generally, we don't kind of, we're not really into celebrities, but for me, I'd, I'd love to meet him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, w- I would love to be able to just sit down and talk with him. I, I, that's just somebody I would like to talk to. Like I said, he's from the same, you know, generation my father was. And, you know, he he's seen a lot in his life. Yeah. 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 Um, I... I can't, I can't imagine, you, you know, you, you, you get this thing with celebrities where you have to realize these are not, these are not the people, these are not, they don't, they're not the parts they play. There's somebody <laughs> else entirely. Yeah. We've talked about that, you know, idolizing, idolizing an actor or actress because of the role that they play is the worst thing you can do because they're, they're not those people, but I can't imagine him being anybody else besides, you know, Mufasa or King Jaffa or Darth Vader or the guy on, you know, Field of Dreams. It's just like I, I used to think, man, you know, he was so him in that in that in Field of Dreams in that apartment. I'm wonder I wondered if he took any of that and was like, People always want to meet me. I don't want to meet any of y'all. Y'all, y'all are crazy. Go home. <laughs> I think that would be what's really he's really like when when you if you met him. It's kind of like that one where he was on the Big Bang with Sheldon. You know, it's kind of like, don't bother me, don't bother me. Come on, sit down. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's one only. You know, I, I never watched the Big Bang very much, but. You know, the few I caught, that was one of them. Yeah, I went through you know, looking for clips um, a couple of days ago um, in preparation for this, and that's one of the ones that I came across. <laughs> and... <laughs> it was actually funny. <laughs> he played a detective in the old after-school specials, the CBS School Break special. Oh. oh, he even played on Dr. Kildare. L.A. Law. Wasn't he the announcer for CNN as well? Yeah. Hmm. I, that was some, I think he just did a voiceover in that one, though. Mm-hmm. I he played Frank Cuso in Best of the Best. That's one of his roles that, that like nobody remembers. Um, I don't know if you guys ever saw Best of the Best, where they they take the, long time ago the karate team to North Korea to to have like a American versus North Korea fight off, and he plays the coach in that that had gone up against North Korea in like a previous like years before that. I think I would have really liked to have seen some of your stage work as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because mm-hmm. if I remember correctly, he's won um, Tony Awards as well. Oh, yeah. He's he's won. I think he won. He's won some Tony Awards. He's been. He's got a lifetime Oscar, I think. Lifetime achievement. Oh, he's in Primary Colors too. He's the CNN yeah. guy on Primary Colors. Yeah, he. Uh, yeah. I, it's just it's you. You look at this, and it's all over the place. It's not just he. I don't think he was ever pigeonholed. He was never put into one certain kind of role. He's just in everything. Well, you really can't pigeonhole him. I mean, I don't think he could. <laughs> no, no. Just... Do you guys well, think... A word for him. It's iconic. That's what it is. He's iconic. Do you think he could do like a whole... I know, I know there were rumors about him doing like a Vader movie, a movie just about Vader. I think he could do it, even, oh, yeah. even as old as he is. Absolutely. Um, 
I mean, it, you know, that, that would be something that I would love to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'd love to see that as well. And you know he would put his all into it um, to bring this character to life again. Lamriana, did you see the Lion King, the the live action? Um, the stage play? No, the, the live action remake that they made. Unfortunately, yes. Was <laughs> I, I wouldn't watch it. I just wouldn't. Was he good? I, I'm, I'm... It's like with coming to America too. Um, you feel good seeing him, or, or in this this case, hearing him. Um, but it just makes you realize just how soulless the film is. Mm. You know, I heard, I heard that. It's that just it, they just don't have the expression or anything. They they don't because it's like if you're using live animals, that's a different type of thing. That's like, you know, wild kingdom. But animation allows you to do so many things that you couldn't do in real life. So with animation, um, we got I don't want to say this. It's like the it's like the animals and the lions actually had a soul, even the hyenas, who in real life hyenas are pain in the ass nobody freaking likes that (laughs) but in the film the way that they're animated they you like they like get to you you're like oh god they're freaking funny i can't stand them but you know i like them but you get into what their character is and that's like the magic of animation that was done for the lion king live action it's just like if you just mute it it just looks like another episode of wild kingdom it really does it's just it's it, all you think about is how good the original Lion King movie was and how much you wish you could watch Lion King one and a half to watch Nathan Lane and the other guy who played Pumbaa just go off the rails. <laughs> yeah. Well, and well, not just that you had, like you said, the hyenas having Whoopi Goldberg and Cheech Marin. Mm-hmm. Who was the other one? Who was the other one? Was oh, it, um, man. I don't freaking remember who he was. I think because Whoopi Goldberg and Cheech Marin have such distinctive voices. Yes. Yeah, the other guy, I can't remember who he is. And he never, almost never talked either. Doesn't talk. That's just Ed. He just. Ed. <laughs> yeah, it's just Ed. <laughs> <laughs> that's so. That's so horrible. Where you've got such a good group of voice mm-hmm. actors, and good, good, good morning and and good night, Wookie Exile. Good morning and good night, brother. Thank you for the beginning of that, because yeah, Mufasa. Ooh, say it again. Say it again, <laughs> Mufasa, Mufasa, Mufasa. <laughs> uh, I, I, you know what? I, uh, he's one of my be- favorite actors of all time. He's definitely in my top five. Doesn't matter whether he's a voice actor or whether he's he's playing a real role. It doesn't matter. He's he's James Earl Jones. You know, I mm-hmm. I'm I'm not gonna get I'm not gonna get too radical here. I'm just gonna say this that in a time where people are pointing their fingers, in a time where they're calling us all these names, the fact that James Earl Jones is in my top five. It probably wouldn't even phase him. They probably, oh, well, you're still this. You're just doing this because you're, you know, white suppression or some shit like that. And um, I'm just, whatever. Whatever. We don't care. We don't care here what someone's skin color is. We don't give a shit. We don't give a damn what their sexual orientation is. We want someone that's, that's badass. We want someone in the role that's badass. Exactly. Yeah. For his talent. For because people have to remember, James Earl Jones's career exploded in a time where black actors were rare. Yeah. To see. Mm-hmm. To the point where just hearing his name is just like, no, he was just a top-notch actor. He was just a he was a top-notch actor who happened to be black. Yeah. And people tend to f- seem to forget that these days. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Exactly. In fact, Steven Seagal with a $2 Canadian Super Chat. I'll be your big Mufasa Simba. Get to the buffet. 
<laughs> oh, thank yeah, you so very true. much for that two dollar super chat, Bad Steven Skull. Skull. Yes. Oh, uh, Chron- apparently Google is erasing everything Kronos types in chat. I'm so sorry, Kronos. Uh, the Google, the Google bots are out. They're messing with the algorithm again. The Google bots are out, and they are like we couldn't throw any links out last night. I could, but nobody else could. Um, Tried it this morning. It happened with my <laughs> chat last night. Um, yesterday afternoon too certain folks were putting things in the chat like links for the guests and google moderator was just zapping them all mm-hmm. yep somebody turned the bot up to 11 yeah <laughs> and dark shadow logan two i remember from that time james earl jones and sydney portier yes yeah mm-hmm. they call me mr tibbs <laughs> yes <laughs> Oh man, what do you guys got coming up? What do you guys got coming up in the future? We'll start with Lorena. What you got coming up? Let's see. So um, today at 12 noon for the lunch table show, we have a guest, probably not very well known, but he has been on uh, Paulie's show, uh, just Reggie, who is a DC Comics fan and is also a martial arts instructor so it's going to be interesting talking mortal Kombat uh with him on the show today at 12. so i have that um also on sunday is the welcome to florida live stream at 8 p.m and we're going to be talking about the infamous villages retirement community which seems to be in the police blotter a whole lot so we're going to be talking about <laughs> it's oh god it's it's like high school with old people it really it really is it's it's <laughs> it is it is it is so infamous it's got a documentary that was done <laughs> about you know a, about this place it's oh god there's so many just like you know hit and runs with golf carts and old beef it yeah <laughs> it's you know, Viagra pill rings. It's just, it's, 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 it's something. It's, it's something to see. So we're going to talk about that. Um, no, oh, I know what I want to retire. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> well, I, 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 before, before I forget, um, I have, I actually have a message for you, Mariana. Oh. Um, I talked to, I had uh, Cameron Paja on earlier this week and he says, oh, you tell her, Rihanna, I love her. I love her. I absolutely love her. I was like, I will. I will. I promise. I will. Oh, thank he loves you. you. He loves you. He was like, Cameron's I was on with amazing. her the other day. He's like, I was on with her the other day. I love her. I love her. I was like, I, we all love Rihanna. Oh. oh, much love for you, Cameron. Thank you. <laughs> Day Bob, do you got anything going on? Are you going to be on our 300 watch party tomorrow? Uh, probably. I didn't. I've been kind of staying away from social media for the last week or so. Just kind of was dragging me down. But yeah, I'll, I'll be there. Oh no, I, I completely understand. Um, I we all it. need. Go ahead, Lorena. Oh no, I was just saying. I understand. Yeah, I get you. <laughs> yeah. I know you. I know you do. I know you do. You're in the same boat. I, ah, ah, no more. Like I'm turning it off. I'm gonna go watch yeah, cartoons. I'm gonna go watch cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I started watching Transformers again the other day. I was like, oh my yeah? god. Yeah. 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 The Transformers. Da, 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 more than meets the, the eye. eye. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I yes. got GI Joe on a playlist now. Oh yes, I was I was thinking about ordering that. They've got the entire original series, the entire thing for seventy bucks on Amazon. I was like, man, I could just order that. I have to order the movie with it though. 
I gotta order the movie with it because I don't have the movie. I've got the the what is it, the mass device chronicles or whatever. That's the only GI Joe I got is the mass device mm. s- s- series. But yeah, I know what you mean. You gotta go watch cartoons. Purple. Oh my god, Chris Persia just got deleted by the Google moderator team. Uh-huh. They deleted Chris man what? down, wrench down, <laughs> wrench <laughs> down. <laughs> <laughs> oh no thank what you though say? chris he said don't forget purple valkyrie rides at 10 a.m they took him down for throwing out a link my yeah, god what's wrong with you people <laughs> we'll be here all day good <laughs> lord purple valkyrie what do you got coming up in a little over an hour i'm going to be joined by mark the infinitely tired and we're going to be talking about another film icon ray harry Harrison. Nice. Oh, that's a good oh, right. one. Looking forward to that. And then Sunday, I'll be joined by um, Final Death Star um, from Into the Unfamiliar. And we're going to be talking um, kind of UFOs and supernatural spookiness. So oh, looking forward be, to that. That'll be cool. Mags, and you know what? Mags has got it right. Right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we've got we've got a watch party coming up tomorrow. We're gonna watch three hundred. Yes. Nice. Yeah that that one's been on the books um, for a while, but we're also gonna have a preview of what we're gonna watch next month, which is why I'm watching Transformers. Um, again, the series, the original series, the G1 series, because we're gonna watch the 1986 um, Transformers movie. With Leonard Nimoy and Orson Welles. Can't wait for that one. Yes. (laughs) What did he say his name was? Galvatron. (laughs) (laughs) That's gonna be that's gonna be a quoter. Everybody's gonna be quoting that one. Megatron, is that you? Here's a hint. Yeah, it's it's yeah, oh, yeah. It disrupts my coronation. Coronation star scream. This is bad comedy. <laughs> God, Leonard Nimoy played such a badass villain. I love it. I love it. I love it. So that's what we got going on, guys. We've got we've got a we've got a watch party this Saturday. I don't know what I'm doing for the rest of the weekend. I don't know where I'll be. I know I got something going on. I'm going somewhere. I'll be on something, and then we'll be back. Where are you going? <laughs> Where am I going? You're joining a speaker. Um, yes. Yes. I'm going to be hanging out with speaker on Saturday doing um, the Sal Marillion. We're going to be talking the Sal Marillion. Ooh. So if anybody likes like Lord of the Rings stuff that nobody knows about, mm-hmm. um, by all means, because one of my favorite, one of my favorite parts of the Sal Marillion was, um, man, I can't remember his name now. The guy who made the rings. No. Sauron did not make the rings. He made one ring, and that's it. He made the the one ring. There was another guy, an elf. He made all the other rings. So you know how mad he, were you at that start oh, of the son of a bitch? <laughs> I'm like, you got it wrong. He didn't make the rings. He only made one ring. He tricked <laughs> the elves into making the other one. Yeah, the Salmor Salmarillion, Salmarillion. Yeah, whatever. That's <laughs> thanks. You're confusing me. It's the name's confusing enough as it is. Don't make it more confusing. <laughs> That's all, folks. That's right. <laughs> Everybody take care and have a great one. Thank you so much to the panel. Thank you so much to the chat. Have a great weekend, everybody, and we'll catch you next time. Bye. 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 These videos are tremendous. Like, comment, and subscribe, and hammer that notification bell.